Welcome back to the Wayward Wags. This week we are talking all about the challenges of traveling in your RV. Okay. This is also one of the collaboration videos where we've teamed up with five other YouTube channels and we're releasing the video on the same day about the same topic. So as soon as you get done here, make sure you pop down here and go check out all those channels and see what their challenges are on their travel days. I'm curious if you got similar issues or not. Yeah. First challenge we want to talk about, and you knew it was coming. Uh, it's got to be number one. Backing in. <laughs> backing in's always been my arch nemesis. Yeah, it's my kryptonite. It is. So it's tough. It is. We had to back into this spot right here. Now this spot wasn't that bad. No, this was actually decent. Because this is backing in on my driver's side. Not a lot of obstacles. Nothing like that. But we do run into a lot of challenges with backing in. Yeah. Now a couple of those challenges are obstacles that are in the way. We've had even ones where there's like a tree on each side of the entrance uh, yes. of the site and you back in, you got to get your RV perfectly in there. Be precise. And then you get people that want to help. Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> Can I help you back in? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the gesture, but no. Need it? We'll ask for it. Yeah. That there is other challenges of backing in. You know, some of those, like the 90 degree back ends are, are really difficult. If there's an incline, that's difficult. Okay. And we check on Google Maps. When we look at these places and book them, we look on Google Maps, but sometimes you just can't see the obstacles. Yeah, some of the terrain you can't see. You don't know what you're getting into. You don't know what site they're gonna assign you to. You don't know if it's gonna be on an incline or if it's gonna be a 90 degree back end or if it's gonna be backing in on your blind side. Yeah. I prefer backing in fishbone on my, on my driver's side. Yeah. That's the preferred method. But then once you get started backing in, there's even more obstacles. One of the ones that bothers us the most is the low ceiling. Yes. When RV parks don't trim their freaking trees. Yep. Then I'm driving the rig backwards slowly so he can trim those trees. While I'm up on top, <laughs> sawing away. Hey, what you doing? Huh? What you doing? I'm doing the RV park's job. <laughs> and mm -hmm. we don't even ask permission. Nope. You put me in this position. I'm doing it. You don't trim your, your trees, we're going to do it for you. That's right. <laughs> and we got a discount for that, by the way. We did get a discount for that. <laughs> so next challenge, slides. Slides are always a challenge. <laughs> but why are slides a challenge? Slides are a challenge because of where they're placed, depending on your floor plan. Yep. And apparently for us, where we stay the most, rear living slides are a challenge. It seems like no matter where we go, either you're gonna hit something with your slides or when you when you move the rig to where those slides aren't gonna hit an obstacle, now your living side's not lined up to where they intended your living side to be. They'll have like a little patio section there or a little living section or a place where it's concreted yeah. where you can put all your chairs and stuff. But, but if you line your slides up to yeah. miss the obstacles, then your stairs aren't stairs even close to lining up. Ever. <laughs> so you got to pick your poison. Hey, yeah. do you want your stairs to line up or do you want your slide to hit a tree? <laughs> Next challenge, and I don't care what kind of rig you got or what kind of setup you got, anybody could have this challenge. And that's the placement of your pedestal, your sewer, and your water. A lot of times they're not conveniently all located like this one is. This is all in one spot, nice and neat and clean, and everything reaches. But it's not always like that. Sometimes you'll have your power pedestal back here, you have your water spigot up there, or you have your water spigot way up there, or your sewer will be way in the back. And it kind of depends on where your power comes out of your rig too. Our comes out of the side, but we used to have an RV where the power came out of the back. So you have to strategically place your rig so that your, your power cord will reach, or your water will reach, or you have to have extensions for those that'll reach really, really far. Okay, so the next challenge is checkout time and check-in time. Yeah, because of the way we travel, uh, we generally only will travel two to three hours at a time. Yes. So if checkout time is at 11 a.m. and check-in time isn't until like 3 p.m. Two or three, yeah. Well, we're only going two hours. Mm -hmm. We got to get out of this one. Yes. And we can't get into the next one. Correct. So a lot of times we'll have to do some calling around. See if we can come early. Asking for permission to get there early or asking permission to stay a little later. later. Or if no one's willing to budge, 
<laughs> killing time somewhere. <laughs> Sitting in a parking lot <laughs> killing some time. The last challenge we're going to talk about, we can almost guarantee that no other channel has this issue, and that is lizard poop. That's right. This guy, occasionally, will go on travel day. Yeah. Not cool. <laughs> but we are prepared. We are. When I say we, I say me. Because I will pack paper towels, fold it into a Ziploc bag, <laughs> and we have either the, the toilet wipes or hand wipes, wet yeah. moist wipes, on hand, ready to go, in case the mood strike him to go. I'm telling you, when he goes, you know real you quickly. You know <laughs> very quickly it is god-awful smell. <laughs> but the good news is, once you get it cleaned up and bagged into the Ziploc bag, the smell's gone almost instantly. It is completely gone, like it never happened. Yeah. Strange. And it usually happens on longer travel days. Yes. Usually he's good for a couple hours, but you go into like three or four hours, he starts bouncing around too much, stuff starts jarring loose. Or if he had a good eating the yeah. day before, you, you gotta be leery, it's coming back <laughs> out the next day. <laughs> but that hasn't happened in a while. He's no. been pretty good about that. Uh -huh. But every once in a while, we gotta deal with lizard poop. Yes. <laughs> it's almost like, Swerve off the road, panic, get it out. Get it. Get it. Oh. <laughs> it usually results in me climbing into the back seat to, to handle it. Yeah. Well, if you're an RV traveler, be sure to leave us a comment. Let us know what your travel day challenges mm -hmm. are. I'm sure that you have way different challenges than we have. <laughs> and don't forget to pop over to those other five channels and see what their mm -hmm. challenges are. And stick around for a few seconds because we're going to honor a fallen service member. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans out on the road, Everything you need to know is down in the description of the video. We appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Say bye. Say bye. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> I don't like that. He does not like that. <laughs>